Okay, so while he's getting my uh, slides up, you know, floods, global warming, CO2, uh, disasters like uh, hurricanes and cyclones, tornadoes, you know, what the heck is happening to this Earth? The garden spot is soon going to be Mars. So before we go there, I want to tell you about our efforts in terms of looking for life beyond Earth and where we are, okay, at this place. And indeed, the first place I want to stop at is Mars. Uh, doesn't have anywhere near the, f the effects uh, that we see here on Earth, but indeed, uh, we have had a, a, a number of orbiters and landers that have been uh, ex examining Mars for about 50 years. And because of that data, and we've been accumulating it and analyzing it, we can really get a pretty good idea as to what's happened to Mars over time. There's clear evidence that in very early on, three and a half billion years ago, Mars was a blue planet. It had a significant amount of water on its surface. It went through rapid climate change, and we don't know what that was exactly. We don't even know how fast that was, whether that's 100 million years or half a billion years. But indeed, it went through this climate change, and then now it's the more of the arid world that we see today. So if we were looking for life on Mars, it's really about looking for past life. Now, there may be some evidence that there's life there today. We're actually uh, getting methane observations. Methane uh, is, uh, could be generated um, abiotically in addition to uh, biotically. And so those observations are really critical, and we're after understanding those to, to the point of determining if they are uh, an indicator of, of uh, uh, some of the microbes that may be in aquifers that lie underneath um, uh, the planet and all over the places. So this is an artist's conception of what Mars may look like in this past. Its so northern hemisphere was prim the primary ocean, and at some place it was uh, underwater by more than a mile. So this really is a significant amount of water. And in fact, a lot of our missions where we go and we examine on the ground and look for a variety of uh, traces of organics and, and many other things is in the ancient shoreline of Mars. Okay, this is where indeed water come and go. Now we have plenty of evidence uh, that we've accumulated and here are uh, the missions that have landed on Mars, those, uh, those that are in red uh, have come and gone. Um, the um, yellow ones are those that are going to land in the future. ExoMars is going to be uh, launched in 2020. It's an ESA mission. InSight, we're going to launch on May 5th. That's where it's going to land. And Curiosity and Opportunity are operating today. Now, this is a Mercator projection of Mars where the color is altitude, and it's in a normal spectrum for which the reds are the highs and the blues are the lows. And so here, along the greens and the yellows, is indeed that ancient shoreline of Mars. And that's, those are the locations that we're really looking at uh, what Mars uh, can tell us about its past and whether life actually started in the ocean and migrated to land. Perhaps that's where it happened. What we're finding out from missions like MAVEN, for which when Mars lost its magnetic field, it really uh, was hammered by the solar wind. We believe this also happened fairly early. It may or may not be related to climate change. But from MAVEN, we're really getting an idea of how much the solar wind impacting the atmosphere of Mars has stripped it over time. Mars actually continually loses uh, oxygen uh, uh, at more than a kilogram to almost two kilograms per second across the planet uh, every second during normal solar wind conditions. And of course, during big conditions like coronal mass ejections, the planet really gets hammered. And so indeed, um, uh, this is telling us that it's probably been the solar wind that's whittled away the atmosphere over the last several three or four billion years. Now, we also see indications on Mars. Um, uh, okay, sorry, uh, I lost a slide, but that's okay. We're going to move now out to the outer solar system. Once again, for Mars, we're looking for evidence of past life, and perhaps there's level evidence of life today, but it would be much more microbial. Now, traditionally, astronomers have always said, well, it's the light from the sun that actually, if you shined it on a planet, 
And, and that planet about the size of the Earth could maintain water as ice, vapor, and liquid. That's the habitable zone. Well, over time, as our sun has increased in intensity, that habitable zone has moved outward. And Earth is what we would call centered really nicely in the habitable zone. But what we're finding out now is that is not the only way we should be looking at it. And in fact, what we do when we look at the outer solar system is we're finding environments where subsurface oceans, like on Enceladus and like on Europa, have existed perhaps for billions of years. And even different planets, sorry, different moons like Titan, where there is um, a liquid on its surface that could be a harbinger of completely different life, may really open up the concept of looking for life well beyond just this traditional habitable zone, but in the outer part of the solar system. So how is that working? Well, let's talk about a couple of these objects. Here's Enceladus. Now, this is a relatively small moon. It's about 300 kilometers or so in diameter. And when we, look at, uh, when we look at objects, the first thing we want to do is look at the crater distribution. See, no craters here, but craters here. Except the craters should be everywhere, and they should be fairly dense if the body has been impacted over three or four or five billion years. So this tells us that this region is indeed recent material that's filled in the craters. So this is relatively new, resurfaced part of this particular moon. Now, what's really exciting about this moon when we look at it are these tiger stripes. So, so here's an area in the southern hemisphere. These tiger stripes, uh, that's what they call, we call them. It lo sort of looks like stripes on a tiger. They indeed are huge cracks that actually allow access to lower layers in, in Enceladus's crust, and they seem to be much warmer. And what's coming out of these cracks, we now know, are geysers. And in fact, as you can see, uh, here are the geysers. And even uh, when we, we have the uh, tops of the geysers illuminated, we can see that these are not just geysers, you know, one like Old Faithful. Of course, there's nothing like Old Faithful. These go up to 150 kilometers or more. But it's actually a wall of water pouring out of the cracks, okay? So when, indeed, we uh, fly through those and we take a really good look at what's in those, we find a fabulous mixture of organic material, we also find silica particles. We also get indications, indeed, that what's happening in this ocean that's underneath this icy crust are hydrothermal vents, where material is mixing, uh, heating, heating uh, the ice, creating this ocean, and having only the crust be there. So what's the engine that's doing that? It turns out it's tidal forces. It's tidal forces from Saturn in this case. So these, these bodies are in elliptical orbit, and when they're close to the planet, they get squeezed, and when they're further away from the planet, they relax. And every orbit, this back and forth motion, ends up as heat that melts the ice, that supports the oceans underneath these bodies, and they've been this way for billions of years. Now, we believe it takes not only energy, perhaps tidal forces. you got to have the organics, and it seems to be there. Uh, in addition to the water, we need the water as a solvent to not only extract uh, 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 nu nutrients, but then provides the waste. But you need time for life to evolve. You need time for life to develop. Perhaps here on Earth, that's 500 million years. There's some discussion as to whether that it takes it that long. But these bodies have been this way for billions of years. So it's really quite exciting when we look at this. Uh, indeed, we now believe there's been an underground ocean, sorry, undercrust ocean uh, 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 underneath the whole planet, and indeed plenty of indication of hydrothermal vents. We've flown through these plumes many times now with Cassini. And in fact, uh, there's no more fly-throughs because indeed uh, Cassini was running out of fuel. And we didn't want to crash Cassini on, on Enceladus nor Titan 
uh, because of the potential for life that might exist there, which is one of the main reasons why we moved towards disposing of the Cassini spacecraft right into Saturn. And we did that uh, indeed on the 15th of September. Well, let's talk about another one of the moons, and this one is Titan. Now, Titan is really a pretty spectacular moon. It's a moon of Saturn, and it's bigger than the planet Mercury. Okay, it's bigger than the planet Mercury. Has its own atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure is two bars on the surface, okay? Twice the atmospheric pressure here. The atmosphere is dominated by nitrogen. It has trace gases of methane. But what one of the really spectacular things about Titan is indeed that it has liquid on its surface, okay? It is the only other body in the solar system with liquid on its surface, and not a little bit. These things can be bigger than our own Black Sea, and there's a lot of it, but it's not water. It's methane. Now, we also, through our radar observations, know how deep some of these lakes are. And many of these lakes, at least uh, Mari Kraken, is well below uh, the, the depth of, of uh, 200 meters down. So, uh, so this particular lake is absolutely enormous, and it's liquid methane. So as I mentioned, when we talk about life needing water, needing energy, and organics, maybe life needs a liquid and the right kind of materials in addition to the energy to be able to provide life. And so if there's any place in the solar system where we could go and satisfy that set of material and have life like, unlike us, it's Titan. It's Titan. And we call that life weird life. So with that, let me end and take any questions you may have. Thank you very much.